We've traveled over 5,000 miles from home to take you on a trip to Tuscany. Sun-kissed vineyards, cypress trees, medieval towns, just some of the intoxicating sights you'll see in Tuscany, where the Middle Ages are alive in the modern day. Situated between the cities of Siena and Florence sit nine municipalities that make up the coveted Chianti Classico wine region. But behind the rolling hills are real people who dedicate their lives to bringing these wines to life. Tune in today as we give you a taste of the toast of Tuscany. Tuscany is one of the most beautiful places in the world and Count is a good representation of it. If anyone knows the land's bountiful beauty, it's Count Sebastiano Capone. His family first bought this Greve and Chianti estate winery in 1524. Even after 20 generations, the past is present and comes back to life on the back of every bottle. Fernando Capone known as the most solemn senator and for 20 years the de facto prime minister of the Grand Duke of Tuscany, Cosimo III, a super Tuscan well suited with the local giant as our city. But their ancient history doesn't keep them from forward thinking. For the production part, I have two very good cellar masters, one woman and one man. And uh, which is because it's very important to have both palettes, because mm -hmm. women and men have different palettes. How do you think men and women's palettes are different? Women usually are much better at descriptors. Another thing that they tend to know, at least in my case, they tend to have a more of an approach like mother to babies with wines, you know, so they tend to know all the babies very well. So you know, when I'm doing a blind tasting, and my the Sabrina, who's a, the, the, the woman seller master, uh, she will more or less know which wine is it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's very good at that. Women have good attention to detail. Men have vision, women take care of nitty gritty details. That's mm -hmm. usually what, what that is usually the case. They're the dreamers. I know. We make it happen. Exactly. <laughs> Established in 1385, Antonori's ancient roots run deep. Now, 26 generations later, the family maintains a leader in Italian wines by practicing three principles passion, tradition, and institution. Now, Antonori has uh, maybe 2,000 hectares of vineyard in Italy. We have uh, lots of estate all around the world. And, uh, but, at the same time, we are a real uh, family. I feel the presence of the history, and I think that uh, we have to work in the right way to maintain the history, but at the same time, to go ahead with the innovation. For the first time in the family's 625 year history, you can now see the winemaking process for yourself at the family's new state of the art facility. Why did you guys decide to open to the public? To share with other people how the knowledge of how a wine is, is done mm -hmm. because many people drink wine, but actually know nothing about how a wine is made. And here we wanted like to teach people what's behind a glass of wine. And what's the reaction been like when people come? They are all, they are all like that. Elevating your taste to a higher place is easy riding on these Black Rooster roads. In Toscany, in Chianti, every piece of land have a name. What was the name of the place we were just at? Solatio. And what does that mean? Toscany way to say exposed to the sun. Our tour under the Tuscan sun continues at Castella d'Albla, which is here in Rada in Chianti and owned by the largest winemaking family in Italy. The story of this uh, estate is very, very long, starting in the Middle Ages and started by noble family of Florence. Zonin family bought in 1979 from a, a Ginori Conti family. Quality is the first thing that uh, a winemaker or a producer of wine have to, to, to make. Um, Gianni Zunin start uh, this uh, road uh, more than uh, fo fo 40 years ago when start to buy property around Italy. You can see the, re the, the Middle Ages in the building, you can see the Renaissance in the Villa Beantu Haas. You can say the, the story, the culture of the, the region of Tuscany and the Chianti Classico. The future of wine is uh, not quantity, but is quality wine. So remember that uh, this wine can uh, exprime when you, you drink him. So I, I want to, to underline the importance of this 
very, very elegant wine. Elegance seems effortless in the territory where tranquility and tradition fill the air, and where friendships were formed between one of America's founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, and the family that fathered Chianti Classico. We are here in the beautiful Chianti Classico region of Italy. We literally have Siena over our shoulder. We're at Fonterutoli, which is one of the oldest properties in old Chianti, and belongs to my family since 1435. I represent generation 24th. You don't look a day over 23rd. <laughs> <laughs> and is it true your family going back years and years and years ago actually fathered Chianti? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, we can say that. Uh, one of my ancestors, Sir Lapo in 1398 wrote the first official known document mentioning Chianti wine. So he was the first to associate the word Chianti to wine. And this was a few centuries ago. For someone at home who's never tried a Chianti Classico wine before, what would you tell them? I would say the Chianti Classico is a great wine and is one of the best wine to pair with food. It has this beautiful freshness, this complexity, and uh, this nice uh, elegance which can pair with a lot of different foods. Enjoy food, wine, life. Uh, I think this is a this is an incredible uh, privilege to to be in this kind of industry. It's, it's so unbelievable. A privileged lifestyle is postcard perfect here, where the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness is attainable under the Tuscan sunset and around any Toscano table. I'll drink to that. How do we say cheers in Italian? We say cheers, uh, saluti, arrivederci. Or... Arrivederci. What does that mean? Arrivederci. I'll see you again. I hope so. Yeah. I will see you again. Thank okay. you so much.